All right, welcome everybody. Thank you so much for coming to our session. Uh, we're going to be talking about Argo and uh, this incredible community that has sprung up over the last few years. Uh, my name is Dan Garfield. I'm a co-founder, chief open source officer of CodeFresh. We're an enterprise Argo company. And uh, this is Alexander. Uh, thanks, everyone. So my name is Alex, and I'm a, a co-founder and chief architect at a company called Acuity. We also do Argo. And I also have been a long time maintainer of pretty much all Argo projects. My most recent focus is on Argo CD. Alex? Ah, good morning, good afternoon. I'm Alex. I work as a principal engineer at uh, Intuit, which is the, would you say the, the original company? I don't know if people will say that. Uh, I mostly focus on uh, Argo workflows and Argo events. Yeah, I I'm, uh, I'm absolutely feel privileged to share the stage with these two who are lead maintainers and absolute legends and uh, contributed more code, I think, between them than anybody else. So uh, we're going to be running through this ecosystem, which is incredible. Uh, again, if you can invite neighbors, raise your hand if there's a seat open next to you, because there are a whole host of people who are looking for seats. So those in the back, if you see someone with a hand raised, go sit next to them. They're asking you to be their buddy. So buddy up. Um, so we're, like I said, we're going to be talking about this amazing, vibrant ecosystem that has been growing dramatically, and there are a lot of opportunities uh, for uh, you as community members to join in and take advantage of these things. Um, we already introduced ourselves. Uh, for those of you that are familiar with maybe just part of the project, there are, there are four main tools. There's Argo Workflows, which is this incredibly powerful general uh, purpose uh, workflow engine for Kubernetes. Argo Events, which is typically used for triggering workflows and things like that. Argo CD is the world's most popular and fastest growing uh, GitOps engine uh, today. And it's far and away. It's really amazing how that community has grown. And Argo Rollouts is one of the easiest, quickest ways to get started with doing progressive delivery, canary releases, blue-green deployments. How many Argo Workflows users first? Ooh, Ooh like a really good quarter of the audience. Argo CD users? Ah, OK. All right. That's awesome. Um, so like we said, it is one of the fastest growing, most popular CNCF projects today. We recently uh, ran a survey of users and asked them how likely they were to recommend Argo to a friend. And Argo CD scored uh, a, an incredible 72. This is, a, this is a scale that goes from negative 100 to positive 100. Uh, and uh, 72 is like... Uh, some of the most beloved you know, companies in the world can reach that level. And 48 is very, very strong. Like Starbucks is like a 48. You know, people love their Starbucks. That's in America. <laughs> it's a big deal there. Um, uh, it's maintained uh, in, a, in a partnership between Acuity, uh, BlackRock, CodeFresh, Intuit, Red Hat, uh, and of course, a, a, an amazing community of individual contributors that, that help out with that. It's used by uh, Google, Adobe, NVIDIA, uh, Tesla, PayPal, EA, um, the, the list goes on. And if you're using Argo, please go add yourself to the users list. We'd love to see uh, how that grows. And it's in a very long list already, and everyone counts. Uh, if you're not familiar with that NPS score, like I said, anything above 70 is considered excellent, and anything above 30 is considered great. So already a lot of love being shown to, uh, from, from the community. Uh, so uh, another part of the Argo project that you may not be aware of is Argo, Argo Project Labs. And Argo Project Labs is really this growing ecosystem of tools that are designed to work with Argo. Uh, and there's already uh, a lot of ecosystem projects, and some of those ecosystem projects end up getting merged into these main Argo tools that you're already familiar with. Uh, so for example, uh, Argo CD notifications and application set started off as Argo Labs projects that people contributed. They had this idea. They said, hey, when I'm adding applications, wouldn't it be amazing if I could templatize that and just add them at scale? Application set. Um, when we surveyed users who are using Argo CD, uh, we found that everybody that had over 1,000 applications, uh, so the people that were really scaling, every single one of them used application set. So the fact that that's merged into the main project, started in the community, uh, I mean, it's all community, but it started as, as kind of an individual con contribution and idea that was then merged into the project, and now everybody benefits from it. Um, and there are so many more amazing projects in there. So if you have an idea, if you have something you've been working on, a lot of companies, they build little tools you know, uh, around Argo to help them do this project or that project. We'd love for you to bring those. And uh, so contact us, reach out, hit us up on Slack. 
maybe we'll get you into Argo Project Labs and uh, we can get more contributions. Maybe it gets merged into the main project. Um, uh, one project that I want to highlight that was added in the last uh, six months, seven months, was Argo CD Autopilot. And Argo CD Autopilot is a GitOps compliant uh, interface that allows you to bootstrap Argo CD and have it create your directory structures and all these things for you. And I have a very quick demo for you. So here you can see, uh, basically, uh, first I need to sit, set a Git token uh, because uh, this is a GitOps operated interface and so it's gonna write all the changes to Git. Uh, we set the Git repo where we wanna store our files. So this is where all the configuration for Argo CD as well as all of the applications that are installed and managed and all the projects that are managed there are gonna be set. Uh, and then we run Argo CD Autopilot Repo Bootstrap. This is going to install Argo CD. Uh, and then once it's installed, it's going to set up our directory structure and add all of the uh, components of Argo CD and make sure that Argo CD is self-managed. How many people are using Argo CD self-managed today? Okay, so this is a pattern that's getting more and more popular and um, uh, one that I personally love to see. That's the way I like to do it. Um, we're going to add a, a project here for the local cluster, and you could add you know, many clusters. You could be managing a thousand clusters with a single you know, Argo CD instance. And then we're going to do an app create demo app, and we're going to specify where the manifests for those come from. Uh, and it's going to create a customized overlay in our um, uh, repo that we're working on that references the base uh, as that application. Uh, so now that it's been pushed, uh, we'll pull this from Git. You can see it's created apps, bootstrap, and projects. And uh, we'll run a tree on this really quick um, so we can see how it is designed this structure. So you can see Argo CD is managing itself. If you want to update Argo CD, you just change the, the version reference that it's referencing and it'll pull in an update, update itself. Um, and then if you want to add applications, you just add a file under application and there's an application set that's set up that automatically will take all of the files under those folders and automatically create applications from them and deploy them to your cluster. So this is a, a, a very opinionated way to use Argo CD. Argo CD is generally very, very flexible. And so this, that's why this is a labs project. So if you want to try out Argo CD Autopilot, uh, we'll have a link for you at the end. Um, but let's talk about extensibility because there's been a lot of work done over the last few months to add extensibility points into Argo CD and Argo workflows especially. So why don't we start with Argo CD and rollouts? Yes, awesome. Um, all right, so let's talk a little bit about uh, Argo CD. And also, as you all know, Argo CD is a GitOps operator uh, that helps developers to manage applications in Kubernetes. But it's a little bit, even, it's trying to be, be more than that. So it's also a very pow powerful Kubernetes <coughs> dashboard that helps developers to manage application after deployment is complete. And my point is that scope is, uh, is pretty uh, wide. And in order to be very helpful to engineers, we kind of have to integrate and have to work well with a lots of other ecosystem projects in the ecosystem. So for example, uh, <coughs> Argo CD don't force engineers to write YAML. Instead, you can use your favorite config management tool, such as Customize or Helm. Uh, in order to be truly useful dashboard, Argo CD <coughs> has to have a deep understanding of various uh, Kubernetes resources, such as deployment, pods, and even uh, popular custom resources or projects like uh, Cert Manager or Istio. And so UI have to understand how those, uh, you know, the structure of those resources and provide useful visualizations. And we have plans to even integrate with some third party metrics providers, meaning third party to Argo CD. And we want to pull data from systems like Datadog, uh, Prometheus, and, and so on, so that engineers can see useful information in the Argo CD UI itself. And so in order to do so, we have to build all those integrations. And we quickly realized that it's not really scalable uh, long term uh, because it takes a lot of time for the core team to introduce all of those integrations and then maintain them. And so we kind of realized that it's the time to try to make Argo CD uh, extensible. And so we've got to, we try to group the ways of uh, how we want to extend Argo CD. And we come up with those three major uh, extension points. One of them is manifest generation, <coughs> as I said, second is <coughs> resource customization, and third party IPI integrations. And first, I want to talk about uh, manifest generation and how we want to approach it. So basically, we come up with a, 
uh, feature that we call uh, config management plugin. And we decided to split implementation into several steps. And so <clears throat> we basically plan to deliver it in three steps. And step one is complete, uh, which is a basic functionality. So as of version 2.3, you can take any uh, CLI. And as long as it produces YAML, <clears throat> you can use it as a config management plugin for Argo CD. So, and uh, the snippet on the right side, kind of, or oh, is it left side for you? So it demonstrates uh, the, the configuration that Argo CD administrator have to provide. So in this case, um, in, in any case, you need to provide a CLI uh, shell command that invoke your binary. As, a, as long as it produce uh, YAML, Argo CD will be happy to accept it and convert it into Kubernetes resource and deploy it later on. And the second uh, kind of portion of configuration is a globe expression that uh, backend uses to kind of automatically detect which plugin is responsible for a particular folder in your Git, Git repository. And so, as I said, this is available uh, today, and I know that people already use it, but it's definitely it's just not enough uh, because you still cannot call it a first-class support. And the remaining bits uh, are following, so we, we basically, we still need parameterization and UI and CLI support. And so what is parameterization? Uh, basically, every, pretty much every config management tool has a way to apply some last mile changes and kind of influence how your final YAML looks like. For example, if in customize, you might say, oh, if you see this particular image, then I want to use latest tag, for example, for dev environment or you can choose to apply a name prefix, let's say if you install the same application into the same namespace. And so a lot of uh, Argo CD users wants to leverage those CLI flags, and we want to expose these flags via config management plugin parameters. And so to do so, uh, we plan to allow uh, admins who configure the plugins to provide the mapping between the CLI and basically, and, and provide declarative definitions of the supported parameters, and that uh, parameterization support is uh, supposed to be delivered, hopefully, in upcoming 2.5 release. As soon as it's there, you will be able to leverage that feature by uh, making changes in Argo CD application CRD spec. Uh, and that's a big step forward. It will cover most of the, uh, pretty much, it will enable all the use cases that we want to uh, enable. But the last kind of bit, which is pretty much it's like a cherry on top of the cake, ability to uh, configure parameter values in application CID using uh, the user interface. And so once that feature is implemented, we can claim that uh, config management plugins kind of provide really first class uh, user experience. And that will open the door to support all type of config management tools. Currently we have I, I would say maybe a dozen requests to support uh, different config management tools, and hopefully we can execute those requests very quickly because we can start building those plugins in parallel, and it doesn't have to be in the core team of Argo CD. All right, uh, we have not so much time, so I want to keep moving. So the next area of customization that I want to uh, cover is uh, resource customizations. So as you probably know, Argo CD understands the health of a resource, and it, it provides a way to uh, execute some actions on the resource. And currently, all those integrations uh, for, for custom resources kind of built in into Argo CD. All of them contributed by the community, but we realized that it really takes uh, kind of every, every little bug contributed in such uh, integration uh, affect a lot of users, and users have to wait like three months before the next Argo CD release, uh, that, which is not great. And we wanted to kind of uh, make it uh, uh, move those integrations outside of a project. Uh, and then another requirement that we, that we had, we wanted to uh, let uh, end users kind of configure custom visualizations for all custom resources uh, in, in Kubernetes. And uh, to achieve that, we've created a labs project called Argo CD Extensions. And we built one extension, which is available already for Argo rollouts. And the screenshot uh, on the slide demonstrates you Argo CD user interface that uh, renders the rollout object. And rollout, as you might know, it uh, provides uh, 
various uh, deployment strategies. And on this particular screen, we have a canary deployment strategy with the multiple steps. And this visualization makes it much easier for end users to understand what rollout is doing. And so please feel free to uh, uh, open that URL and learn how to build an extension. And there is a little bit of help for you. So uh, there is a library uh, called uh, that's available under Argo Approach uh, in the Argo UI repository. And that's just the, it's a library of React components that's already used by uh, Argo CD UI, by Workflows UI, and Rollouts UI. So if you want to build an extensions, you're welcome to use that library, because this way you will get uh, the same look and feel. And basically, your extensions will look naturally in, in Argo CD uh, UI. Uh, and finally, uh, there is. Oh. Yeah, API extensions. So this is uh, on Argo Rollouts. Um, Okay. Uh, oh, yeah, no, no, go no. ahead, go ahead. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> sorry that, no, no, I'm, I'm jumping sorry. the gun. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> yes, so this is uh, the extensions. I'm <laughs> really uh, passionate about that feature. It's still in the plans, and it's, it, I'm, I expect that it won't be delivered in uh, another two, three releases, but we are uh, thinking about making Cargo CD even more extensible, and so we want to be able to visualize data that's outside of Kubernetes. And to do so, uh, we're planning, we're hoping to introduce um, a way for administrators to register additional API endpoints that would proxy requests to system to like APIs such as Datadog, oh sorry, Datadog or Prometheus, and Argo CD would apply the role-based access checks, and basically this gives you opportunity that will give you opportunity to reuse Argo CD SSO and you know access control model to provide access to resources which are not part of Argo CD. And now then, yes. Ah, that's, oh, oh, that's, oh, here's <laughs> my cue. Thank you. So sorry. Uh, so uh, Argo Rollouts, as many of you know, uh, relies on gateways to manage traffic. And uh, currently, anytime we add support for an additional gateway, we have to write a new controller specifically for that gateway and figure out that logic. And um, it's fairly time consuming. But there's an amazing project called Gateway API uh, coming from the Kubernetes uh, community. And it provides a standardized interface for working with different gateway providers. And um, coming soon, uh, this is currently in PR and we're just working through the changes, um, we're gonna be able to vastly extend how many gateways we can support with Argo rollouts through gateway APIs. So currently today we natively support Ambassador, AWS, ALBs, Istio, uh, Nginx, and then SMI, which provides the, um, the interface for uh, not Istio, for um, Service meshes. For the other, for the other service meshes. The, you know what I'm talking about. Thank you, D. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay. um, and then, uh, and now, of course, we can add support for all of these other ones like Google Kubernetes Engine, uh, HA Proxy, Console, Kong. Um, and so, from now on, uh, once this is merged, if you want to add support for your gateway into Argo, Argo rollouts, you only need to add support for gateway API. Uh, so this is a really exciting development. Most of those gateway APIs are currently in, in alpha. Some of them are moving into a beta stage. So this is something that's going to make it a lot easier for a lot more people to take advantage of rollouts. Argo workflows. Cool. Thanks, Dan. Do you fist bump or do you elbow? I can't really tell <laughs> what people prefer. Cool. So Argo workflows is kind of the de facto workflow engine on Kubernetes. So if you're running kind of batch processing, machine learning, um, things like infrastructure automation, and, and I've talked to a lot of people about doing CI. Now, one of the challenges we have with Argo workflows is, is it, it, it's orientated about executing work, and each work item of work gets turned into a pod, but pods are really expensive to uh, create. So we have recently introduced a feature called plugins, and a plugin allows you to create your own kind of template that runs instead of a pod. Um, the reason we've done this is it just takes a really long time to introduce new features into Argo workflows. Our release cycles about every three or four months. But what, with a plugin, what you can do as a user is you can install a plugin um, today. You can write it today. You don't need to learn uh, Golang. You don't need to commit to the tree. And you don't need to really uh, wait for a release. Um, so a plugin is really just, um, if people have gone to any talks about how to extend controllers, it's, it's a very standard um, pattern. Basically, when we want to invoke a plugin, we just make an API request. And this is basically the API contract where we send you the details of the workflow and the template, and you just tell us what the outcome of that is. Um, to implement it, it's what? 
30 lines of Python code, so no YAML. And I know everybody in the machine learning community loves YAML, but I, I'm going to have to let you down. You'll have to write this in Python. And in that, you can just um, uh, write your plugin. Uh, now we have a little video. Oh, it's playing. Brilliant. OK, so let me see if I can narrate the video as it comes up here. So a plugin is just installed as a, typically as a config map that describes the plugin. And you can just install this at runtime. You don't need to restart the controller, and your plugin will appear. Now, if you can install this as a user as, or as an administrator, so it's self-service. Um, and the plugin is just, as I said, a Python script. And this example is just going to run some Python code, a Python expression. And I can pass parameters to this script as well, just like I would do with a normal pod template. In this example, I'm going to get it to print out a message. I just create this workflow. And that'll appear in the user interface. Um, I know most people are probably more familiar with the Argo CD interface, but there you go. Um, and now the message has appeared in the user interface for users to see. So that's that. Um, and how do I get out of this, Dan? Oh. I wait for the end. So we've got about um, eight people have already open sourced plugins. Several of these people open sourced them before the plugins were even available in release. So things like syncing Argo, CD applications, sending Slack or other kind of notifications, um, running Volcano jobs. I missed the Volcano presentation today. I was looking forward to that. I'm actually I'm running WebAssembly, so you can write your own plugin in WebAssembly if that uh, tickles your fancy. Um, the other thing that people use Argo workflows for is um, building platforms on top of it. So at Intuit, our machine learning platform is based on Argo workflows internally, as is our batch processing platform. Um, and they basically, typically, the pattern is that you'll write your workflow in the language you're most comfortable with. So if you're most comfortable in Python, you write it in Python, and you transpile it to YAML, and then you execute it. So let's just look at a couple of um, platforms that do that. Oh, I was going to bring this up. Machine learning engineers don't, don't really like YAML, and they complain about it a lot on Twitter. So there's a couple of tweets for you there. Um, so here's an example in Netflix Metaflow. So next, Netflix Metaflow is a machine learning library, open source by Netflix about a year ago. On the left-hand side here, you can see that this is the description of a flow there with two steps, a start step and an end step. And that basically gets compiled into YAML that gets run in the user interface. OK, got a little short video for you here. So this is great. I don't have to write any YAML. I can write this in Python. I don't have to build an image. I can just write a Python script, and it'll run that. That gets turned into a uh, workflow template. So I can run the workflow template multiple times with inside Argo workflows. Um, and in this example, it's parameterized. So I can run 10 instances of this particular pod. And that'll spin up 10 pods. Hopefully, it'll spin up 10 pods. Brilliant. The uh, demo gods, and by which I mean Cisco, uh, smiling on us today. There you go. You can see that this model has been trained there as well. I think that's done. I'm scared of pressing escape in case it restarts the computer or something. There we go. Um, another platform that uses um, Argo workflows internally is Kubeflow Pipelines. So Kubeflow Pipelines is one part of the Kubeflow suite, which is uh, you know, kind of a quite a sprawling suite of um, machine learning and AI processing. And again, this is another example. This is the Kubeflow DSL that you write your workflow in it. Now, that gets transpiled to, of course, a directed acyclic graph, because we, we love those in the, in the community. And if you notice that, this is, the, this is the graph shown in the Kubeflow Pipelines interface. And this is actually the same graph that executes in Argo workflows. Just the layout of that graph is a little bit different. Um, one of the things I really like about Kubeflow Pipelines, actually also about Metaflow, is the way they make it really easy to surface um, visual information in their interface here. And so some examples here of confusion matrix, as well as graph there, which I think is pretty cool. OK, next steps. I think, Dan, this is you. Next steps, OK. So uh, next steps, um, first of all, uh, there are some additional great talks uh, coming up around Argo. So tomorrow, uh, Alexander, your, your partner, Jesse, is going to be uh, speaking uh, with TikTok about how they're using uh, Argo CD successfully. Um, and there's going to be a great GitOps, GitOpsifying with cross-plane talk uh, from some folks at IBM on Friday. So don't, don't miss those talks. Um, and there have already been, actually, quite a few great uh, Argo talks at, at KubeCon. I'm sure you've all been chasing them down. Um, some other community resources to mention. 
there is a uh, GitOps certification available uh, uh, focused on Argo CD that uh, somebody on my team, Coast, has put together. Um, so you can get the bit.ly slash Argo dash training. And then there is this awesome Argo list that the folks at Acuity uh, uh, sponsor and put together and has getting started guides, best practices, uh, how should you, you know, make your directory structures, how should you handle permissions, all these, uh, how should you handle secrets. And of course, join us on Slack. We're on the CNCF Slack. There's tons of channels. There's uh, Argo Workflows channel, Argo CD channel, more channels than you can throw a stick at. I know that's a lot. It seems overwhelming. But, you know, start with the area that you're interested in and then you can branch out uh, and see these other ones. So really amazing resources coming from the community. Um, and if you have a blog post, if you have a great best practice guide, a presentation, uh, send it on to that awesome Argo list, um, which has been a huge resource for us, and uh, I know that everybody uh, relies on it. Um, we also have a subreddit. We have an Argo project subreddit. There's a GitOps subreddit, so join those. Um, forgot to put that on the slide. And even more exciting, uh, coming up at the end of the year is going to be ArgoCon. This will be the second time we've done it. How many people attended ArgoCon virtually last year? A handful, okay. That's amazing because we had like over 6,000 people attend that conference. So it's really this like tour de force that's arriving with ArgoCon. Uh, and so go and register for that. And you have until the 31st to submit a CFP. So about a week and a half left. Go get those CFPs in. We'd love to have them. And of course, GitOpsCon just happened on Tuesday. And there were a ton of talks. There were probably nine, 10 talks that focused on Argo CD, Argo rollouts. Uh, those recordings are all available now, so if you missed GitOpsCon, you can go and watch those. Uh, and that's it. Uh, thank you so much. I just want to say it's a huge honor for me to be invited to share the stage with these two lead project engineers. Oh, I'm a fairly new maintainer. These guys are the leads. These are the legends. These are the guys that built everything. So give them a round of applause, please. <laughs> oh, thanks, John. Seriously. Well done. Um, we technically have three minutes if we want to take questions. So anybody have any questions? Yeah. And I'll repeat them for the camera. Yes, a new feature. Yeah. There's a new feature where you have uh, a Helm uh, fi a Helm chart specified, and you can specify values from a separate repo. Alexander, I think that's 2.4, uh, right? Yeah, it's, it, it didn't make it into 2.4 because oh, 2 we, th yeah, so some time ago, we made decision to just. Can we turn up uh, Alexander's mic? Uh, yeah. So some time ago, we just made the decision to release no matter what. So we're kind of releasing every three months. And there was, you know, the feature didn't make it now, but it's actively being developed right now. The proposal is finalized, so it definitely makes it into the next release, 2.5. Yeah, that's it. Yep. 2.5. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah, shoot. I have the question about the Argo CD image updater. Uh, isn't it that um, a little anti-pattern for those who have uh, two-week CI/CD pipelines, and uh, as it almost works uh, in the latest tag mm -hmm. for the <laughs> images? What do you think? Uh, I don't uh, actually. I don't think so. There is. A, I feel like it's. A, I would call it a pattern, but not so many people uses it because it requires you to be like 100% GitOps if you like really able to disconnect your CI completely from your deployment and you confident that every time you push anything into Git, it's 100% tested. So, but I, I agree, it's kind of, it's opinionated feature. Not everyone uses it. And uh, like before we joined Acuity, I was working at Intuit. We were not using that uh, feature because we wanted to drive uh, deployment from the CI. So it is opinionated, uh, but. Uh, That's what labs is that, for. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> That's why it's in the labs. That's yeah. right. I, I'm personally a big fan of that, that pattern. Uh, to be honest, but yeah, thank okay, you. Thanks. Over here. Other questions? Yeah. You talked about the interview and is it going to be accepted as a gateway? So Linkerd is already supported via uh, uh, SMI, right? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Any yeah. other questions? Okay, thank you, KubeCon. Thanks, everyone.